a man to the moon, but on this day 40 years ago, the Soviet Union guided the first unmanned rover to the Earth's closest neighbor. The automatic remote-controlled robots, also known as lunar tanks, roamed the moon's surface, revolutionizing space exploration. RT's Maria Finoshina reports. Back in the 1960s, the lights were on day and night within these walls. The Soviet Union had come up with a plan to send an unmanned rover to the moon, but the question was, how would it move around the unfamiliar surface once it got there? The solution was finally found at this institute. At first we wanted to use caterpillars. We used to make tanks and we loved tanks. But it became clear that wheels were more reliable. Caterpillars could get stuck and that would ruin the whole mission and we couldn't afford to make a mistake. Lunahood 1, popularly known as the Lunar Tank, was the first ever remote-controlled rover to land on another celestial body. Initially slated for a three-month mission, it wheeled the lunar surface for 11 months. During this time, it travelled more than 10 kilometres, taking over 20,000 images, including some with its own footprints. Every lunar morning, once in 28 Earth days, when the sun's rays touched the lunar hot solar panel, it would wake up, beep, a lonely sound in a silent world, and set off on a new adventure. Exactly where it would head was decided far away at the Mission Control Center in the Crimea. Vyacheslav Dovgan was one of the five-member lunar hot team, which also included a navigator, antenna operator and two engineers. The Lunar Hod's camera filmed the moon's surface and sent black and white pictures back to Earth with a delay of more than 20 seconds. So we had to judge the situation using this picture while the Lunar Hod stood still. We got basic info on what was going on outside, stones, the course of movement, craters and other such things. After that the driver would choose the next step. The first steps were difficult, but in time it seems the team's work became more creative. Once, on Women's Day, we wanted to get our wives flowers, but we didn't have time, there was so much work. So our navigator suggested drawing a flower-like shape on the moon with the rover, and we'd present the women with the pictures. He even told journalists that you could see the shape through a telescope, but of course that wasn't true. After sending its last pictures back to Earth, the lunar hood finally stopped in its tracks. It's still there to this day. But the little rover's steps were a giant leap for mankind, and the tracks it left on the moon's surface will forever remain a trail blazed for future explorers. We look forward to checking out the lunar subpolar areas which weren't explored during the Soviet era. We know that water-based ice samples were found there. We hope that one day they will allow us to set up an inhabited lunar base. Back in the 1960s, the two superpowers were sending both people and machines to the stars and back with only one goal, to outdo each other. Billions of dollars were spent in the race to leave one another behind. But decades on, it's all different. The form of frontline space now unites nations against the bigger goal, to boldly go together where no one has gone before. Marif Noshna, T. Moscow, St. Petersburg.